Hi, I'm Justin Thames, Director of Governmental Affairs for the Florida Institute of CPAs, and welcome to this week's edition of Impact Report, your update on all things impacting the CPA profession in Tallahassee. Today was supposed to be the last day of the legislative session. However, budget negotiations and timing, the legislature need a little bit more time to finalize the budget and take a final vote. So tomorrow will actually be the last day. We're currently in a 72-hour pulling off period. And while we're doing that, the legislature is trying to make some decisions on some uh, final pieces of policy that they can't reach an agreement on. One in particular is the tax package. We'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. Um, for the budget, the FICPA had a good year. We've been got included the unlicensed activity funding and also the funding for the Clay Ford Scholarship Program that helps uh, fifth year county students finish their degree and become CPAs. Now, I mentioned the tax package. That's one of the, the hot items right now that's being debated between the House and the Senate. Uh, they've had some things come up. In addition to the disaster relief and the uh, back to school tax credits, we have saw that uh, some language got put on there related to uh, not-for-profit hospitals and the local tax referendums and that's kind of been a sticking point between the house and the senate so we'll see how that shakes out between now and tomorrow uh, some other policy that we've been sharing with you the last couple of weeks is the state and local government bill that impacted the uh, auditor selection process that bill has been finally uh, signed by the governor and if you remember this would uh, really impact uh, some of the procedures that the local governments took to select the auditors and who could serve on the audit committee all in all, I think we reached a good place on that policy thanks to the state and local government committee of the FICPA. So we're, we're happy with the outcome there. Another bill that I wanted to let you know is the, the piggyback bill that, uh, that piggybacks on the uh, federal tax code. That bill has passed and, and it included the decoupling for the guilty provisions that we mentioned to you last week. So now that bill is going to the governor for his signature. Uh, another bill that we've talked about at great length over the legislative session is the uh, deregulation bills that have been out there, in particular one uh, sponsored by Senator Albritton on the Senate side. The bill ultimately it isn't going to be making its way through the legislative uh, session. House and the Senate had several provisions that they couldn't come to an agreement on, and, and just yesterday Senator Albritton temporarily postponed, or as he said it, indefinitely postponed that bill for the rest of session. Now, I want to talk to you about uh, another bill that impacts the CPA profession quite a bit, House Bill 977 and Senate Bill 1252. We've been working on with both Cindy Stevenson, who's a CPA, and Representative, or Senator Joe Gruders, who's also a CPA, on this language all year. Uh, it does three things that, that specifically will impact the CPA profession. One, it reduces the number of ANA hours that you're required to take for CPE from 20 to 8. We've gotten a lot of feedback about this provision, provision, and if you remember the last couple of years, we've done some surveys with our membership, and we've also included it in our legislative policies. So that's in the bill. Another provision in the bill will include uh, the SSAE standards into the definition of, of public accountancy. That's one area that we have, have identified where uh, the, those standards weren't originally included in what defines practice of public accounting. And so we felt like that that was a, a gap in our, 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 our standards and in, within our legislation. So that was cleaned up this year. And then also, uh, some good news for those of you that might have their license go inactive. We've, we've uh, set a hard number on the number of hours it will require for CPAs to change their license back to, to active status from uh, inactive status to 120 hours. So all three of those provisions should should be very uh, uh, productive for the profession and seen in a good light. We, we are excited that this bill has finally passed. It's going to the governor for his final signature, and we'll be bringing you more updates on the implementation of that bill with the Board of Accountancy as we go along. So I can't thank everybody enough for all your support through the legislative session. Our members have been great. We've gotten a lot of great feedback from a lot of these updates and the bills we've been following. So with, without you, we wouldn't be able to do our jobs, and we're so grateful to have you all as our members. And we'll keep you updated on any new changes during our final recap next week. So thanks again, and we'll see you next week.